Hi, how's it going? Yes. yes. Great. <laughs> it's good, it's good. It's so funny. This is one of those days. I'm actually talking with you direct from our bus home. So oh, I was wow. going to the back lounge. Wow. You, oh, yes, the you, joys of being on the road. <laughs> yeah, you guys get a bus. Real nice. Oh, yeah. All 12 of us get to sleep on here, too. Wow, it must <laughs> smell amazing in that bus. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Just roses and, uh, yeah, lavender all day long. Um, well, well, let's get right into it. Um, Emily Marsh is, mm -hmm. well, Emily Connor now in Mystery Science <laughs> Theater 3000, the, uh, the Time Bubble Tour, but... Emily, you are now a historic figure because you are the first woman host in how long has it been? Almost 40 years since they started Mystery Science Theater? That's true. It's true. What, uh, what has taken so long for crying out loud? <laughs> well, uh, I think there was always so much um, uh, promoting from within with the Mystery Science Theater. Oh, right. Um, thinking right. of, obviously, Joel created it. Um, Mike was one of the writers, so it was natural that he became the next host. Then you have your break. Um, and then for the next Netflix season, uh, Joel had connected with Jonah. It so happened. And then, yeah, to do the live tour, which was crazy to think that we, people ask all the time, they're like, did you have a connection to Joel? Like, was there some sort of, like, how did you guys meet? And I was like, oh, no, it was an old-fashioned <laughs> audition in New York City. Hundreds of people showing up. Oh, my God. But, uh... I know, it's, uh, it was so crazy. And then even actually my character, I don't think necessarily was meant to be a woman. Because originally in the live show, it was a, it was sort of an unnamed, it was going to be like almost like a circus performer more. Um, but then I'd like to think, or so Joel will tell me, he was like, I was just taken with your East Coast delivery, man. <laughs> oh, an East Coast delivery. What is that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I've been trying to figure that out myself. Oh. <laughs> you know, when it's Joel telling you, you go, "Oh, absolutely, man!" Right. And then right. You go back and try and figure out, "Oh, man, what what is it that I'm doing right? right. What is that? Whatever, delivery? yeah, whatever gets me the job, I'll just go with it." Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it it happened to throughout the live tour. He kept trying me out on more riffs, like during shows, and then cut to basically doing the announcement. I think I didn't quite believe that I would be a host until we made the announcement for Kickstarter and I got to see the patch they designed. It's been lots of, I like to think of this tour as being uh, imposter syndrome, the tour, because uh, it's just me slowly still like believing that this is actually come true. We've right. <laughs> already filmed episodes at this point, but you know, one of those things that is just so wonderful, it kind of takes like a couple months to settle in. Well, you you were a fan of the show, right? I mean, did I read correctly that you used mm -hmm. to watch the show with your dad? Is that right? Yes, that is absolutely correct. And actually, I totally credit it with the reason that I got this tour, because in that audition room, I basically told Joel, so my mom basically was a tradition with my dad to watch MST3K when my mom would go on business trips, because <laughs> my mom famously... Thinks MST3K is a stupid show. Um, <laughs> oh, she's one of those. So, okay, <laughs> she is one of those. I think we we all know those people. Yeah, we love them dearly, but mm -hmm. they just don't quite get right. our love for these bad movies and these robots. Right. Um. And so that was something I told Joel in the room when I auditioned. Was hey, I'm very excited to be here. Like me and my dad. Like I grew up watching this with him. Uh, however, my mom, on the other hand, said wow, that show got a national tour, <laughs> and it, ki it kills behind the table. Um, and then for the callback, Joel brings it up. He was like, I just thought it was so funny, man, what you said about your mom. And I was like, well, Joel, now that you brought it up, I actually have to be honest. She actually said, how did that stupid show get a national <laughs> tour? <laughs> kills again. <laughs> get cast. And he would always say on tour, he was just like, I just thought it was so funny. You were so honest about what your mom said. <laughs> but to make a long story long, um, <laughs> yes, I did. I did grow up watching this with my dad and my brother. And it was definitely something that I like to think really made a lifelong impact on the comedy I really enjoy, as well as my lifelong obsession with bad movies, which goes even further than MST3K. Right. So <laughs> to an unhealthy level. Has has your dad uh, been able to see you on a live show? Yes. Oh, good. Yes, good. he has. Good. 
That's awesome. Yeah, it's very sweet. And and my mom too. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. What is she saying now that it's you've actually now that you're actually you made it into a job? She's been very sweet. She likes the live shows a lot. I think for her, she's like, I think I think I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the line. <laughs> I think I think I understand it. Um, even though over uh, when I was back for like a week, we had a week off from doing shows, and I was like, oh, let's let's sit down and watch. You know, Destination Venezuela, just for fun, one of the shorts that we really love. <laughs> and my mom sat down with us, and I was like eyeing out of the corner of my eye. I was like, is she? Does she get it? <laughs> right. She chuckled. Uh, she at least endures it now more than she did when we were growing up. Well, that that's cool. And, it, it, I mean, your father must be so proud. I mean, that, that must have been a thrill for him. What did he say when you, you told him you got the job? So, he was he was very thrilled. I think... I think in the beginning, because we really didn't know what it would become, myself included, because at the beginning it was, I'm going on tour with MST3K Left. Oh, wow, that's so cool. I think the moment it really hit him was when we were in, because he came to see the show in uh, D.C. last tour, and then Seattle. And I think in Seattle, I mean, come on, it's Seattle. It's full of nerds. <laughs> like This is exactly like <laughs> the sweet spot for that city. And so in the audience, I think there were people like cheering like Emily. Nice. <laughs> nice. Words. I think it was a little like unbelieving. It was like, there were people there. They didn't know you. They were cheering your name. <laughs> and I was like, I know, Dad, I know. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's great that they, they, yeah. get to, they get to see that, and especially your dad since you spent a lot of time watching it with him. And there's, there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, cast members who were fans. I was reading who are now mm-hmm. part of this, which is which is cool. And I think, like you said, um, you know, they, like when I brought up, like you're the first female member, but you said they promote from within. Mm-hmm. I think it's because it's mm-hmm. such a tight knit. Gr- I'm imagining it's a tight knit group because of what they went through from going from local kind of local TV to network, and then the whole crowdfunding thing is just a testament to the Misties, you know, and their enthusiasm for the show, right? Yes, 100%. That they came out not once, but twice to basically financially support, you know, Joel being able to, like, make his vision a reality and for us to get to do all of this is honestly unbelievable. (laughs) When it was happening, another thing that I just always was pinching myself to be like, how is this real life? Um, (laughs) But it makes me think of speaking of tight knit and it kind of being a labor of love of Misty's. Uh, it reminds me of when we were filming right before we went on tour and I forget exactly what we were doing. It was another scene was being shot. I was off to the side and our props person, we were just talking about MST 3k stuff and it somehow came up. He went, you know that everybody here on this set basically requested to be here, right? Like everyone here is a Misty in some form or another. Like, even to the extent that I didn't realize our sound guy was a big fan. And at one point, he was like, hey, guys, I don't want to take any time, but could you actually do, like, a birthday greeting to my wife? Would that be okay with the robot? Like, that would really make her day. <laughs> and we're awesome. like, of course. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's... So, that, definitely a labor of love. Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, it's great that you're a fan. Some other cast members are fans because they get it. And it's not just a gig, mm-hmm. and that's you know that's why people love it. And I and it, I was, it's something that like I've been doing like a lot of people. I think I would like to think other Misties have been doing their whole life, sitting on the couch, mm-hmm. riffing, watching a movie. I remember sitting with my friends all the time, like I can't believe these people are getting paid to do this because we do it like mm-hmm. every every day. So it's like a like a dream job. That was always my dad's my dad's thing. He would say when we were growing up, he's like, "This is the beauty of this show." that you were always doing this, but they found a way to put it on TV and make it, like, better. <laughs> you know, make it professional. Right. Um, it's brilliant. So simple. Simple conceit. Brilliant execution. Um, the movie at the Hanover Theater Show here in Worcester is mm-hmm. Making Contact. Now, is that... Mm-hmm. So do you stick to the one movie through the whole tour? We unfortunately do, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only because... <so. laughs> Some days you do get a little tired of it. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I would imagine. I mean, I'm a I'm a Trekkie, but you know, even s- sometimes it's like, okay, I'm tired of Wrath of Khan. Let's move on. Um, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. so, uh, so you've I've I was reading you've had to watch this movie over forty times just to prepare for this. Is that right? Yes. Well, <laughs> so the wonderful thing, yeah, um, as well as the 
unfortunate thing when it comes to how many times we watch this movie is that we actually have gotten to be with this live show from its creation. So we actually got to be in the writer's room to write the riffs, to write the scenes. Um, there's in particular a scene that was me directly getting to speak to Misty's, which is my favorite that I got to do that about why I'm here. Uh, but as a result, it means that, you know, in the writer's room, that was two weeks of going through this movie in excruciating detail and watching it on your own to come up with a funny line. And then luckily we had a two month break where we didn't have to watch it. But now coming back to it, it's like, yeah, we've probably conservatively watched this movie like 80 times oh. or a hundred times oh. by the time we're done with it. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, I, I would imagine, and I don't know if you know anything about this, but some of these movies, over the years anyway, must get some kind of bump, like the MST3K bump, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they, they kind of get put back out there, and then the Misties get a hold of it, and then they, they mm -hmm. circulate it. You know, that, that's, I think that's a great thing. It could be a bad thing in some cases, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but um, uh, in your experience with MST3K, have there been any people from the movies you've covered that have reached out and either said, hey, you guys are hilarious, or my lawyers will be contacting you? So, in my limited, limited experience, mm -hmm. uh, last tour, we did a show, No Retreat, No Surrender, and one of our cast members, Nate, actually really tried contacting the lead actor's agent to see if he would come to see a show. Which is amazing, because we spend so much time making fun of that character. But he is, he's actually a very earnest, good martial arts fighter <laughs> that was made to be an actor. <laughs> um, and so his agent basically said, oh, yeah, he'll come. How much are you guys paying? And we went, N no, uh, just to come. <laughs> and we'd, like, bring him on stage or something. <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, then we're not interested. <laughs> oh, right. And w with this movie, it's directed by Roland Emmerich. So Joel was very convinced that Emmerich was going to show up at our L.A. show, <laughs> which unfortunately, as far, to, as, as far as I know, did not happen. But, so a good story is that the show on this upcoming season 13, Demon Squad, is definitely a passion project that was made by a, uh, a director out of Mobile, Alabama. And apparently they have been so psyched that, this, that their movie got picked for Mystery Science Theater 3000, because apparently they're fans, because the brother of that director reached out to one of our, um, our swing understudy, who's big on TikTok for puppetry, and basically reached out to say, by the way, like, my brother is so psyched that you guys are doing Demon Squad. Like, we cannot wait to see what you guys do with it. And so that, that has been so nice That's to awesome. have, because you wonder if you're making fun, and, well, Mystery Science Theater always tries to, Make fun of a movie lovingly. Right. It's right. never too much cynicism. It's never being like, oh, how dumb is this? Like, it's usually just lighter than that. And so then to have it confirmed by someone who we are doing their movie who is like, I cannot wait to see what you do. It's, it's, it's awesome. I'm very excited, especially since I got to write on Demon Squad. And that was one of the movies that I did really enjoy watching. I would imagine it's kind of like you're in a band and Weird Al covers your song. You know, and you, yeah. can, you can finally say, wow, I've made it. Weird Al has parodied yeah. my song. And the, so these, these guys who make these movies, and a lot of them are low-budget movies, you know, they're like, all right, mm -hmm. you know, MST3K is, is covering this. I finally made it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it got the treatment. Yep. Yeah, which is great. And it confirmed what I always thought about Demon Squad, which you can tell there's low-budget movies or bad movies, I should say, get made for all kinds of reasons. Um, I think you can definitely see there's ones that are like big-budget bad movies where... Maybe it was a money laundering scheme, like <laughs> somebody's sister needed like a leading role. Um, like it feels more like cold business reasons to make a bad movie. Right. Versus something like Demon Squad or The Room or Birdemic, like kind of these passion projects of yeah. a person. I don't know. Those always like speak to my heart because, you know, you've got to respect somebody doing a, just a full attempt at making a movie. And even if they fell short, you're just like, you really tried. You really were trying for yeah. something. And so it's, it's nice that we get to give attention to a movie like that. So you're, you're going to be the, not just the host of the live show. You're, you're the host now. You're the new, 
You're the new prisoner on the Satellite of Love, right? I mean, for the show coming up, which is going to be on Gizmoplex, and that's mm -hmm. uh, a new platform. So it, it gives the show a little more independence being on that. Um, but yeah. a lot of the uh, old cast is coming back, including Patton Oswalt. Yeah. Is that correct? That is correct. I'm describing season 13 as the Into the Spider-Verse <laughs> okay. of MC3K, uh, where you're going to get to see it's me hosting some episodes, it's Jonah hosting some episodes, Oh, nice. it's Joel hosting some episodes, too. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. So, yeah, because that was always um, something that we teased in the Kickstarter was definitely Jonah, definitely Emily, and Joel if we can get to 13 episodes. So it's a, I'm super excited to see what Joel does too. Cause there's been so much of what we've done where it's Joel off to the side being like, yeah, you're doing a good job. And you want to see him, you want to see him release his power. You want to see the original do his thing. So I, I cannot wait to see his episodes as well. Well, that's, that's awesome. And, um, mm -hmm. those start soon, right? I mean, you said you filmed them already, but those will start up. Was it next month or, or in March? Yes, it is March. Oh, boy, I really should know the release date. I just looked it up the other day. <laughs> so I believe I. it is March 6th. <laughs> oh, okay. March 6th. Okay. But don't quote me. Okay. It's on the interweb. Right. If <laughs> you, March. If you've got a smartphone, you can find drop. Yeah, if you got a smartphone, you can exactly. find out immediately. Right. One thing. Exactly. Before I let you go, which I think is really interesting, you are also a puppeteer, but in your, in your role, you don't really do any. Is puppeteering the, the correct term for that? That is exactly correct. And actually, what I auditioned for the, the first tour, I auditioned as a puppeteer, and it was a total surprise that they asked me to be a person and not a puppet. So <laughs> it was a very much of a surprise. Well, I think that's, that's cool also because, you know, since there is, you know, puppeteering going on, you, uh, you have even a better understanding. I think that I, I would imagine that, that worked in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's... Maybe my experience with puppets has led me to come to the opinion that the host, for the most part, is there to sort of bounce off the puppets mm -hmm. and in a way kind of get out of their way and keep the chaos from getting too big. Because uh, yes. Tom and Crow and GPC are just such big personalities, especially Tom and Crow, as yeah. we know. Yes. And nice to see that as the host, because you're a human, I think there's something that a puppet is allowed to be this extra big personality that the host being the human in the situation almost is like not quite the straight man, but almost needs to be like the, the pH is seven, your water right. to <laughs> the extremes that are happening all around you and you react to it. But so that, that is always nice to me is that I'm from being a puppeteer. There's a lot that always like fascinates me about, what Nate and Connor are able to do with the puppets and what they're doing, which I think comes from, which is appropriate, I think, for the show, for the host to be, yeah. in a way, just slightly enamored of these crazy little chaos Muppets that they are. Well, we're, we're looking forward to the show. Uh, the Time Bubble Tour comes to the Hanover Theater here in Worcester. Uh, that would be on February 3rd. And then look for the new episodes on Gizmoplex. We'll just say that sometime in March, just to be safe. At yeah. this point, <laughs> early, early March, early March, right? Just in time. <laughs> so, uh, Emily Marsh, thank you so much for taking the time. We're, I'm very much looking forward to the show here at the Hanover, and and good luck with the rest of the tour. Yeah. Um, ah, absolutely, it'll it's going to be so fun. Right near the end too, so it's going to be very bittersweet.